there, beloved saints. I uh, know it's late. Uh, it's two. <laughs> but um, I've had a lot of appointments this week, so I, I really wanted to answer this for for dear Mitchell. Um, Mitchell says that this verse just bugs at him, you know. Uh, sometimes there's a verse that just sticks in our craw, and it's like, what does that even mean? And until we get peace over it, you know, our mind plays tricks on us, and I get it. So, the verse is about Paul beating the air. Now, this is often taken out of context, and it's so sad, because it's clear that eternal life is a free gift, and it's not of works. Over and over again, we get that. So, uh, people can't see that, and their mind, you know, the Bible is a discerner of hearts. They will preach condemnation where there's beauty uh and that's sad so i want people to have joy and peace and know they're saved so they can be effective and productive and uh it's just so sad that the power of the gospel seems to have been lost and i i just so grateful that god would use a broken thing like me uh, i'm just so honored but uh this is first corinthians 9 uh, we're not going to be able to just read the one verse, because if you do, you won't get the context, okay? But I will give you what the verse says, all right? It is the one uh, Mitch wants to know about, and I'm sure uh, if you don't know, you'd want to hear it too. I have an old video on it, but I, I it's longer, and I used to uh, be worse with my ADHD. I'd rant and go off on tangents, so I'm going to try to stick to the point here. Okay. It says, I therefore so run, this verse 26, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. Uh, all Paul's saying there is that he's not doing what he's doing without direction or purpose. He knows exactly why he's doing it, and he has a specific thing he wants to achieve with it. And then he says, and I keep my body, keep under my body, and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. See, you can lose your salvation. Paul, nope, not even talking about salvation at all. All right, so let's go uh, to the beginning of the chapter. Now, Paul is uh, defending the fact that he has never charged anyone to preach the gospel. It would only hinder the gospel getting preached. And because the people weren't giving to those that preach and defend the gospel, he was having to work as a tent maker most of the time. And it didn't matter to him because he was going to have it done. And it was a burden on him that God had put, God had called him. The Lord said, you're going to be my apostle to the Gentiles. He really didn't have too much choice about it. <laughs> But he loved it, and it was rewarding. And so let's look at this and see what this prize is, because it is not salvation, people. All right, now this first half of this section is him talking about, because he's encouraged them to give and so forth, and he's not going to bug anybody for money. He has to work most of the time to pay his own way. And it gets frustrating for him. A lot is demanded of him, yet nobody's helping him, and so he's having to do two jobs. And so they can't complain about anything because he's got to work to pay, you know, for housing and to eat and so forth. So listen, with that in mind, listen to what he says. Am I not an apostle? Like God sent me. I'm a mouthpiece for the Lord himself. <coughs> Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are ye, are not ye my work in the Lord? You are my work. But I have to keep working, making tents, which is not what I'm called to do. Because it's just where we are. You know, they, they weren't supporting him. If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you. For the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. Your proof that I am an apostle of the Lord. Mine answer to them that do examine me is this. Now, in one place, they're condemning Paul for not taking money. Don't you love us? You won't take our money. And then they're accusing him for needing it. So it's like the guy can't win. 
Have we not power to eat and drink? Have we not power to lead about a sister or wife as well as other apostles and as the brethren of the Lord and Cephas? Or I only and Barnabas, have we not power to forbear working? Who goeth a warfare any time at his own charges? Which soldier has to pay his own way along in the war? That's what he's saying. I'm having to take the burden of all the finances for this. I, I, I get it. I don't ask either because people have just just destroyed it with this prosperity nonsense. You don't promise that if you uh, if you if you support uh, me, you'll uh, have your dreams come true and you'll get a lot of money. No, you won't. God does love a joyful giver. He, he blesses the work of our hands. But it, it's, it, you know, it's been abused so much that most of us do this out of love for the gospel, definitely. But it's, it's hard. And, I mean, honestly, I get it. I mean, I don't work like Paul. But I get it, you know. You want to be there for people. There's only so many hours in the day, and it's exhausting. But people have really abused this. But what he's saying is, do I have to do this? You know, do I have to, uh, uh, what soldier is, is having to continue? Because he's talked to them about this before. But he's not going to ask anyone for anything, and he's not going to charge. Who goes to warfare at any time of his own charges? Who plants a vineyard and eats not the fruit thereof? Who feedeth the flock and eateth not the milk of the flock? Say I these things as a man, or saith not the law the same also? It, the law talks about it, that a man should look forward to the uh, fruit of what he's uh, sowed, and so forth. And don't muzzle the, the ox. I think it says he says that in here. Say I these things as a man, or saith not the law the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out corn. Does God not take care of oxen? Or saith he it altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he that ploweth should plow in hope, and that he thresheth in hope should be partakers of his hope. And now, this is where he switches it. He's not only saying uh, about carnal things, but the hope of, of saving souls. Okay? And you'll see this switch up here. All right says if we have sown unto you spiritual things is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things right so if he's spending time in them shouldn't they help support him and it's not a i mean it, that's not unreasonable it's, it's scriptural if others be partakers of this power over you are not we rather nevertheless we have not used this power but suffer all things lest we should hinder the gospel of christ so nevertheless they have not insisted on any assistance from him because they don't want to he's not going to charge to come to that town and pre he doesn't want anything to stand in the way of people hearing the gospel so that's why he's having to travel and work and do this stuff do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple and they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar. Even so has the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. But I have used none of these things. Neither have I written these things that it should be done unto me. For it were better for me to die than any man should make my glory void. See, I don't want anybody to uh, feel they, uh, that uh, they owe me something. I'm doing this truly for the love of God because I want people saved and because God has dispensed to me the gospel to give to the Gentiles because it's my calling, right? It should have automatically just been done, you know, if, if, they're, if he's feeding them spiritually, they should have been taking care of him. But he's not going to insist on it. And he's going to keep doing it, even if he has to work uh, a labor job. And he wasn't, you know, a whippersnapper. You know, he wasn't super young or anything. 
All right, but I have used none of these things. Neither have I written these things that it should be done unto me, for it would be better for me to die than any man should make my glorying void. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For of necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. God gave him the calling. You're the apostle. For if I do this willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed to me. So God has dispensed this calling to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. What is my reward then? Listen. What is my reward then? Verily, that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge that I abuse not my power in the gospel. So that's why he's not charging. But it is, you know, I imagine it would have been frustrating for him because he does discuss it with them prior. And he's not going to, you know, let the gospel be halted because people aren't giving to him. He's going to find a way to get it done. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might gain the more. You getting a clue of what this reward this prize is he wants to gain people's souls for the kingdom all right and unto the jews i became as a jew remember when he went to the temple and all that yeah he be he became as a jew that i might gain the jews to them that are under the law as under the law just like as if he was still under that bondage that I might gain them that are under the law. Because if they they were that way, and if they didn't see him keeping uh, the ordinances, and he's, I think he shaved his head and stuff, they would not have listened to a word he said. So he went in as a Pharisee and did all this stuff so that he could gain believers in the Lord. To them that are without the law, as without the law. Being not without the law to God, but under the law to Christ. That is, love one another as Christ loved us. That I might gain them that are without the law. So, Jew and Gentile. To the weak, I became as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by, I might by all means save some. And this I do for the gospel's sake. That I might be a partaker thereof with you. A fellow partaker with the gospel. Preaching to others. Not uh, uh, in the kingdom. He's not questioning that. And so he's saying. I have my eye on the prize. It's souls for the kingdom. I don't do this without purpose. So I know. I might have to. Uh, uh, you know I've had to work making tents. I've had to bug people to help take care of uh, some expenses I've had to suffer a lot of things but I do it for the sake of the gospel all right this I do for the gospel's sake that I might be partakers thereof with you two things here he can eat communion with them because he's with Gentiles now I don't know if he was it was reported back to the Corinthian church that Paul maybe went to Jerusalem and ate kosher and did the uh, the legalistic feast stuff and shaved his head. I don't know. It may have gotten reported back to them. Hey, uh, Paul's keeping these food ordinances, right? And that would make sense. Because he says, I become all things to all people that I might save some. To the Jews, I acted like a Jew. To the, it didn't matter to me. These things aren't important. It doesn't matter what's in your body or how you eat. It was all shadows of Christ, right? So being partakers with you, I think, has a double meaning. Partakers in the gospel, preaching to others, as well as partaking of uh, uh, fellowship and meals with the Gentiles. See? And I do this for the gospel's sake that I might be partaker thereof with you. Know ye, here's the prize, know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that you may obtain. What's the goal here? Saving souls for the kingdom. He does all of this for the gospel's sake. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. He can do whatever he needs to do. 
so they can get along with anyone so that they can hear the gospel. Every man striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. We want to get people saved. I therefore run, not as uncertainly, not without direction. I know why I'm doing it. So fight I, not as one that beateth the air, without purpose. Just like, you know, squatting at nothing. Pointless. Just going going about day by day, repeating the same thing. The, the tent making thing, it was, it was holding him back. He's having to work and do this stuff. But he's willing to do it all. But I keep my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. If he went to the Jews, what did I just say? And did not eat kosher and keep their ways, they would have not given him an ear to listen. At all. And if he would have been with the Gentiles and acted all kosher, he wouldn't have related to them and had fellowship with them in their homes. So the Jews would have disqualified him. And he may have offended some other people if he'd have been, I can't do that, I'm kosher. So he does whatever he can. He's a Jew with Jews. He's a Gentile with Gentiles. He finds a way to relate so that they can hear the gospel and he wins souls for the Lord. And it's not without purpose. He says, therefore, so run, not as uncertainly. So not without direction, not without a, a purpose. So fight I, not as one that beateth the air, pointlessly, without direction. The goal here is to for the cause of the gospel to bring people into the kingdom. But I keep my body and bring it to subjection, lest that by any means, when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. This has zero to do with him being cast away out of the kingdom. It's not even talking about that. It's talking about soul winning and, and him keeping the Jewish customs when he's with Jews and, and not keeping them when he's with them so he can partake with them. So, he wants to share that with them, that people are coming to the Lord through the gospel. But, you know, he's up against some obstacles here. And you can, you can keep going. You can see the context here. And then it goes, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under cloud and all passed through the sea. So then the next chapter is warning about temporal or earthly things that can bring condemnation temporally on the church. So that's what that verse means. There's one that beat at the air. It means without direction, pointlessly. Like he doesn't want this life to be without purpose. And he has a clear purpose. You are the apostle to the Gentiles. There's no doubt. He wasn't worried, thinking he's going to be cast out of the kingdom. When, when he was having to... Uh, uh, going to be executed. He said, hmm, I don't know whether to be here and stay with you or if it's better I am absent from the body and am present with the Lord. There was no doubt. There was no doubt. This was not a matter of him. I, I keep, I, oh, I, I live righteously so that uh, God doesn't cast me away. That is not it. That would be self-righteous works. The context is him having to work and not having enough money, not being fed to uh, not even having living expenses to do all this traveling so he can preach to people. And so the poor guy he was always, <laughs> somebody was always accusing him of something. But in any case, I hope uh, that helped you. And uh, it, it, I love studying scripture uh this is my favorite thing to do is to help somebody that is in pain or is shaken up in their faith um so little brother i hope uh that helped you uh not as one who beat at the air just means without purpose or direction that's all it is okay god bless you guys good night <laughs>